Good morning and welcome to Morning Scoop for Friday, March 18th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The spring game is in 29 days. The Notre Dame game in 169 days. The game against Michigan in 253 days. The Buckeye men's basketball team will tip off their first NCAA tournament game just after noon today in Pittsburgh. They will face Loyola at 1215. You can find that game on CBS. The OSU women's hockey team will take on Yale in the Frozen Four tonight in State College, Pennsylvania. The puck drops on that one at 7 o'clock, and that's going to be televised on ESPN+. Plus. I will uh, give you a recommendation. Check that one out. Those uh, those games are very, very entertaining. Really, really, uh, and Ohio State has a fantastic, fantastic program. So make sure you check that one out tonight. Today, though, we're going to be talking college football. My guest is the great Bill Green. He had some really interesting insights this week about NAL, some of the Buckeyes' top targets, and much more. So, Bill, thanks for being here. Hey, great to be here, Tom. So I guess let's start with recruiting. Uh, and a pair of the nation's very best wide receivers for 2023. These are names that we people have probably heard us talk about before. Ohio State is one of the finalists for Carnell Tate. He put out his list of five kind of finalists this week. They're also in the top group for Brandon Innes, who is the former Oklahoma commit as well. You're pretty close to both of those recruitments. So can you let people know where things stand with those two guys right now? Yeah, I have had Carnell Tate in to Ohio State going back a while now. Probably I did my first yes, no, maybe list um, in early January. And I had him in, in that list. I've had him in ever since. And I probably had it on the message boards. I had him in, I think maybe last summer, last fall. I mean, so I've had him in for a long time in the class. And um, I thought it would be done by now, you know, and it hasn't been. And that gives you a little pause, but I still think Heartline's got this one. I think the parents want him in the Midwest. They're from Chicago even though he played at IMG. So I don't think he's going south. I don't think he's going west to USC. I think Ohio State's going to get him. And I've pretty much always felt that way all along. So Cardinal Tate, I have him as a Buckeye. And uh, what about Brandon Innes? He was a Oklahoma commit, then Lincoln Riley left, and then Brandon Innes left the Oklahoma class. Now Lincoln Riley's at USC, and there's a lot of scuttlebutt that USC is a very serious threat to land Brandon Innes now. But it sounds like you're maybe thinking the Buckeyes are still very much alive in that one as well. Oh, absolutely. They're alive in this one. And USC is the, is the main threat to Ohio State here. You know, he decommitted from Oklahoma. And Brandon is not the typical Florida kid that's going to have four or five commitments and, you know, screw everybody over and pick a school out of nowhere on signing day. That's not him. Um, had Lincoln Riley and, and that program stayed together at Oklahoma, he would still be committed to Oklahoma. He would not be taking visits. Um, so Brandon is not the typical Florida, the South Florida kid. I mean, so, and um, USC is definitely a threat. He was out there last week. Um, his seven on seven team, the South Florida Express, they played in a big tournament in LA. So Brandon went with his team. And what surprised me, I didn't know, is his parents went along on that trip. So, you know, obviously they wanted to see the seven on seven tournament, but they were on that visit to USC and my Florida guys who you've met before and we've done videos with before and, and they know everybody in college football. Okay. They, they, they know Nick Saban. The South Florida Express sent the whole secondary to Alabama a couple of years ago with uh certain Daniel Wright, Josh Job. I mean, uh, it was the whole secondary was South Florida Express kids. So they know Nick Saban. They know Dabo. They know everybody. So it's hard to impress them. They were blown away by what they saw at USC from Lincoln Riley. The presentation was amazing. Lincoln Riley spent as much time with those kids as he possibly could have. I mean, he was with them from start to finish. They had a great NIL presentation. Um, USC is a threat here to Ohio State. But, you know, Brandon's going to be at Ohio State in early April. Um, I think Ohio State's going to get it. I think Heartline is going to land Brandon Ennis. I think, um, you know, the way he develops wide receivers and the offense. And I just think Ohio State's going to get Brandon, but I would be more confident on Ohio State landing Tate than I would Brandon. But if you put a gun to my head, I think they get both. All right. I'm going to want to come back to uh, USC and the NAL stuff again in a minute, because that, that is a really, really interesting twist. Sounds yes. like this is, this is not Clay Helton's USC anymore, which is... No, no, uh, no, no. Going to, no, no. going to change some things across the uh, college football landscape. But before we get to the NIL piece, let's talk a little bit more about that. Yes, no, maybe column that you, you mentioned earlier. That is for people who don't maybe don't remember. 
you kind of track where things stand all the way through the recruiting cycle with various prospects in Ohio State. So, you know, here, here's where it is in January. And then in February, well, things have changed with this guy in one direction and that guy in another direction. And you track that all the way through to signing day. So, you know, you were on maybe a month ago to discuss some of those initial impressions. Who are a couple of guys who your information has changed on over the past month? Either guys who are maybe more, much more or less likely to end up as Buckeyes than, than you were hearing before. Yeah, there's a running back out of South Florida, Mark Fletcher, and he can play. I mean, he's kind of getting lost in the shuffle with, you know, all these national guys, you know, Richard Young being the top. And Richard Young is the top guy on the board. Make no mistake about it. But Mark Fletcher loves Ohio State. Um, he's a Carlos Hyde type of running back. He's going to be there in early April. And I think he, they could be, get a su- surprise commitment out of this kid. Now, I know they want two running backs in this class, and Mark could be the second one, you know, so I'm just not sure if he's a taker for Ohio State. I don't know. They've got a lot of big fish on the line at running back, but I think they can get Mark Fletcher if they want him, and I think Fletcher would come in and be okay, you know, playing alongside a Richard Young. I think he's fine being part of a two-back recruiting class. So Mark Fletcher is a name absolutely have to know. Um, and then there's a safety out of South Florida, Damon Fagan. Um, I originally wrote for him in January that he's another Florida kid and he'll be very tough to get out of the South. So I had him as unlikely for Ohio state. That was a huge miscalculation. Um, and again here, will they take Damon Fagan? I think they will. I mean, I think the kid's a heck of a player. Now they're going to get, he's a safety. You know, and they're going to get the Ohio kid, I believe. Um, Malik Hartford. Malik Hartford, I think, is, is going to be in. Uh, they've already got Cedric Hawkins committed. And they're chasing, you know, a couple other kids. The Downs kid, I think, is, is a very real possibility for them. Janelle Aguero, I would have unlikely out of IMG, but you never know. So, you know, is Fagan a taker? I don't know that. If he's a guy they want, they can get Damon Fagan, and he is one heck of a player. Uh, I, I would, I would take him, but you know, Ryan Day gets paid to make that call, not me. So we'll <laughs> see on that. But, but Fagan will be at Ohio State. Fletcher will be at Ohio State. You know, in early April, I wouldn't be surprised if both kids try to commit, and then it, you know, it falls in Ryan Day's lap as to how he wants to handle that. And you know, I mean, I, I think my takeaway there is it doesn't sound like the sky is completely falling for Ohio State in recruiting right now, and and that's oh, uh, no, no, yeah the no. the the, uh, the NIL conversation this week on the board. You had a, you had a whole thread about you know explaining some of the stuff with USC and how they're really kind of really jumping out and being aggressive here. And you've you know you've seen the reporting about the eight million dollar quarterback and all that stuff from Tennessee, yeah. and you know, I mean, there's this whole discussion about NIL, NIL this week and how it's really going to change things and. You know, there were people freaking out that Ohio State's falling behind teams like Tennessee or Texas A&M or Texas or whatever. My sense is you haven't really seen that hurt the Buckeyes in recruiting yet. And, you know, I don't know if that's because but because Ohio State isn't as far back as people might think in terms of the NIL stuff or maybe well, it's just some of the built in advantages that the program has. I mean, is, you know, where, where do you see Ohio State and, and all of that right now? Is that stuff that people need to be freaked out about at the moment? Absolutely not. Um, NIL was something that. If, if we'd have talked about NIL in early February, Tom, I would have been very ignorant to that subject. I mean, and, you know, I've been kind of laid up with a bad back here for the past month. I'm not able to do much, but you can always talk on the phone. Um, and I've gotten an education in NIL. Um, and I think I'm up to speed on NIL now. Where six weeks ago, it would have been hard for me to have this discussion. I think I would have been pretty ignorant to how NIL works. In the 2022 class, there was a lot of stuff that happened at the end where they didn't get Nawakpa, they didn't get the branch kid, you know, Singletary had decommitted. And, and none of those, Brooks, they lost, I mean, and none of those, from what I, information I've gathered, were, had anything to do with NIL. I think NIL did not affect the Ohio State recruiting class in 2022 at all. Either, I don't think it helped them land kids, and I don't think it helped them miss kids. Um, 2023, I, I don't really know where Ohio State is in terms of NIL. I mean, and you just told me something, you know, as we started to do this about Urban Meyer now getting involved. And maybe you want to explain that a little more. 
Yeah, I, I think people are probably familiar with Brian Schottenstein and his NIL yes. organization. You, you know, it's called the Foundation, like the Ohio Get It, the Foundation. Um, he, that's the one he co-founded with Cardale Jones. You've probably seen a little bit about that over the last month or two. Wednesday, they announced that Urban Meyer was joining their board, and you know, I mean, it's obviously way too soon to know exactly how this is going to impact things, but one would assume that that should probably help them quite a bit with fundraising and networking and some of the other stuff they're probably trying to do as an organization. Yeah. Now that's new, you know, and I, and I don't know, Stoughton, I don't, I don't know him at all. I don't know, Brian, um, Cardell, I know, but I really don't, I've never talked to him about this NIL. When you tell me that urban Meyer is going to be involved in this, then I think it's over. It's over. He's not going to get himself involved in anything and not throw his heart into it. You know, the Jacksonville thing, went wrong from the beginning and he was not cut out to be an NFL football coach, head football coach. I don't think, but as a fundraiser and as a, basically a recruiter, you you can't touch him. You can't touch him. If he's involved in this and he's going to put his heart and soul into this as a recruiter. And, you know, we've seen it over the years. It's over. These companies are going to, they're going to donate their money. I mean, he's going to, you know, uh, nobody across the country today wanted to read that Urban Meyer is now going to be involved with NIL at Ohio State. That was not good news for any school in America. Trust me on that. So what is something that, I mean, you, you talked about the education you've gotten in NIL over the last few months. What is something that maybe you think is is a misconception that people have or something that people just maybe don't know that you've kind of learned talking to folks over the last couple of months about NIL and, and, you know, whether it's how it's impacting Ohio state specifically or NIL in terms of how it's impacting kind of the, the national college football picture right now. Well, the, the money is um, it's outrageous. I mean, you know, the $8 million deal that we heard about, I, you know, I never heard anything close to that, but you know, for a four or five star wide out, you know, I'm not going to mention any names, that kid should easily be able to get a million close to a million dollars a year for his four years in school or three years. If he stays three, I mean, that's a lot of money. I mean, that's a lot more than a kid, you know, getting $500 to, you know, buy a suit or something. It's real. And the thing is these parents and the players, they know the game. They're educated. They know what they can get. They know what's out there. And It's going to impact the 2023 class in a way that it really didn't in the 2022 class. Um, So that's what I learned. And again, you know, I think the point that gets missed here, Tom, this is legal. This is perfectly legal. These are not third uncles and bag men. This is legal. And it's something that, you know, it's, it's, it's as important as official visits, you know. Would you not do official visits because you think, oh, they're not important. We don't need to do those. No, you do them. NIL is the same thing. You have to be involved in this, okay? And the money is real, and the parents and the kids are so educated in this that it kind of blew me away because I didn't see any of this last year in the 2022 class. There were, you know, I heard hints and rumors, but I've, I got names, numbers, and stuff like that, schools. And it kind of blew me away. So it doesn't surprise me to see Urban Meyer involved in this. Um, I think that is just a monster for Ohio State. I really do. NIL is here here right now, and it's important. Now, whether it's here to stay, you know, who knows? But, you know, in March of 2022, it's here and it's important. I I think that's one of the last thing I was going to ask you about was kind of the future of it. And, you know, there is a certain, I mean, this is obviously a completely uncertain future, but to me, you look at the eight, you know, the $8 million quarterback. And that was something that Tony Gerderman and I talked about on an episode of Buckeye weekly earlier this week. That seems like, I think people might look at that and go, well, this is just exponential growth. And, you know, next year it'll be a $30 million quarterback. And it feels like the market's going to, there are going to be enough busts guys who just don't pan out. Guys who, you know, you can't, you can't give $8 million to a quarterback every year because that means you're going to have an $8 million quarterback sitting on the bench behind last year's $8 million quarterback. I mean, it seems like there's going to be some, you know, this is going to plateau at some point. The market's going to kind of stabilize at some point. 
am I am I being overly optimistic there that this is not going to just turn into this uh, incredible arms race where it's just the numbers just keep going up and up and up from now until the end of time? Yeah, I think you're right there. Um, the, the you know we just don't know. I mean, it's so new, and and every state has its own laws about this. So I don't know, Tom. I, I mean, I I think once you contribute money and their bus and you don't get anything back in your money. You know, when you have little Johnny advertising for your car company and little Johnny transfers and, and never heard from him again, you just threw a lot of money down the toilet. You couldn't went somewhere else. So I could see that happening and see when they first came out with NIL, um, and I had a post and I was just joking, totally joking, making things up. And I said, I can really see a Nick Saban getting 25 top businessmen that love Alabama would do anything for Alabama and tell them you guys are in my NIL club. This is, this is our club. I need 500,000 a year from each of you guys. You're all multimillionaires. This is what we need. These are the kids we need. Let's get them. And if you can't do it, you're out of my NIL club. And I said that as a joke. I mean, I thought it was just a clown show. And now I'm thinking, hell, that's probably the way to go. You know, and there are people that donate money to these universities every year. Huge sums of money. But, you know, to get access to Nick Saban or Lincoln Riley or whoever, you know, be in the club, man, be in the NIL club. Maybe they donate, you know a lot of money every year. And if they bust, they bust. I mean, they donate money every year to the school anyway. Mm -hmm. So who knows, Tom? I don't, I, and I said that, that was like total, like being a clown joking. And now I'm thinking, man, maybe I was uh, ahead of my time there. Cause that's probably the way to go. Yeah. It, it feels like there's, there's a couple different directions. This could go. It feels like it's, it can't possibly go up forever. If, if we have learned one thing, yeah. uh, watching the stock market or watching house prices or whatever else, it can't right. go up. It, the line that cannot go up forever. That is not how it works. But uh, yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see how how this all sh uh, shifts and changes over the next couple uh, next couple of years. And yes, definitely the addition of Urban Meyer to the uh, Ohio State NIL uh, collective that definitely does feel like a very very significant change as well. So, uh, Bill, thank you for joining me. This is a uh, well well timed episode. Didn't know that we we're going to talk get to talk about the uh, pretty significant change, but there we are. So, uh, thanks to Bill again for joining me. You can uh, find all of great Bill's great content at BuckeyeScoop.com. Also, make sure you check out, he has, does the Gives in the Bank podcast with Mark Givler. That is always a great listen as well. You can find that and all of our other great podcasts. Just search Buckeye Scoop wherever you're listening to this. You can find the Buckeye Weekly podcast that Tony McGurderman and I do, the Big Me Kickoff podcast that Kevin Noon does, Around the Oval with Alex Gleitman, and of course, Gives in the Bank. So check those all out. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.